Is it easy to be a successful pastor? How challenging is the pastoral ministry for you? These days, becoming a pastor in Africa has transitioned from being a calling to a challenging business assignment that demands manipulation, tricks, and cheating to survive and prevail on the pulpit. Can you pastor God's way? Can you carry this burden without secretly shedding tears? Without using witchcraft, without manipulating, without using ESP, without praise about doctrines, without preaching paganistic gospel, you could still be successful and still do the right thing and still make it. In this video, you will learn about pastoring. Hello everybody. Well, yet another product for you guys. You can't believe what product this one is. I'm sure you will not believe it. I'm sure you'll be totally uh, fascinated by it. So what I'm doing right now is going to be called DSS Pastoral Nuggets. So at last, I've got opportunity to speak to pastors. And not just to pastors, but to believers. Many people know me as uh, a pastor, but you've never really seen me in that ampoua. You've, <laughs> you've never really seen me in that quality, in that, in that role. To speak to pastors, to speak to my colleagues. I have a reputation because of some of the teachings I've been doing, especially to correct the maladies in the African churches. So many people have now come to the impression that I'm bashing pastors, I'm fighting pastors or attacking pastors. So many pastors have come to believe that uh, I don't like pastors, that I want to pull down other people's ministries and churches. And nothing could be uh, farther from the truth than that. I'm a pastor myself, so I want to really use this opportunity to comfort and cool down my colleagues, the, my pastor colleagues that, no, no, I cannot be an enemy to pastors, but I'm an enemy to demonic practices that have come to hijack the church, especially the African church. And so, but I'm not, while I'm not against individuals and I'm not against pastors or even ministries, but I'm against practices that are evil, that are against God, and I'm against anything that is not the truth, that is against the truth, and that is against the doctrine and the practices that the, that the Lord Jesus Christ has left for us and the apostles have given to us. So in this session that I'm going to be doing, uh, DSA's Pastor and Nuggets, I'm both going to be ministering to the pastors and to believers, congregants. And I'm also going to be talking about how church is supposed to be run and what church is supposed to be meant for. But before then, I would like to start with the topic, which is one of the things that a lot of people know me for. I'm going to be talking today about pastoring without this. So in a few days, in a couple of series that I'm going to do in the pastoral markets, I'm going to be talking about how to pastor without tears, because this is going to be uh, one of the ways I could support the pastors and help the pastors to know that they don't have to compromise, they don't have to go through the evil ways and you pastors don't have to compromise, you don't need to go to the doctor, the doctors, you don't need to go to wishes, you don't need to manipulate things, you don't need to do the wrong things to be successful. I've been successful as a pastor, our church and my ministry has been regarded as one of the top most successful ministries in the world. Uh, the Peter Wagner, that used to be a, a missiologist like that and a church historian. That said, our church, in the Embassy of God Church is one of the top 10 churches in the whole world. If I have been able to build a church like that. It means that um, I know one or two things about pastoring. And without using witchcraft, without manipulating, without using ESP, without craze about doctrines, without preaching paganistic gospel, you could still be successful and still do the right thing and still make it. But let's first of all start with the series on pastoring without tears. So what are the things that will help you to become a pastor without tears? Number one, you need to know that Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, my burden is easy, my yoke is light. Jesus says that his yoke and his burden, they are easy and light. When he calls us to ministry, it doesn't mean, it doesn't intend for us to have a burden that is too heavy or the yoke that we cannot bear. 
his yoke is easy and his burden is light. What does that mean in practical terms? It means that whenever we accept to uh, minister or to accept the call to be a pastor, first of all, you have to know that it is coming from God. Make sure that you didn't just go into ministry because it's something that somebody told you to do or it's something that you think is the end thing now. It has to be his body and it has to be So it has to be something coming from it. You have got to get that leading of the Spirit and that affirmation from Him and confirmation from Him that He's asking you to do what you're going to do. That He's the one asking you to go and start that church. That He's the one asking you to go and, you know, do pastoral ministry. You've got to seek for confirmation from Him and let the Spirit of God speak precisely to you because He's the head of the church. And if the head of the church is not employing you, for the job, you know, you better go and do something else. So you could minister as a believer, not necessarily becoming a pastor. Because unfortunately, right now in Africa, many churches and many pastors are indoctrinating people, telling them that the, basically the only way they could serve God is by becoming pastors. And if you are eloquent and you are well to do and you dress nice and you talk well, they just basically make you become a pastor. And that is why we've got a lot of compromises in the church. So the first thing to do to become a pastor without tears is to know for sure that you are calling to pastoral ministries. If you are not sure about it, just be a believer where you are and discover your passions. You discover your other passions and begin to realize them and begin to fulfill God's calling upon your life in other areas of life, other than pastoring. But if you want to pastor and you don't want to be frustrated, please make sure you know God is leading you. So that is how his yoke is going to be easy and his body is going to be light. So that one is important. Number two thing for you to become a pastor without tears is, is that you need to learn how to just practice the culture of casting that body back to God. Returning the body back to God, getting the yoke back to the person who, to whom it belongs. You see, God said it is His body, and Jesus said it is His yoke. That's in Matthew 11 28 to 30. He says, It's my yoke, it is His yoke, it is His yoke, and His body. So if it is His yoke, and if it is His body, then why don't you just go and learn to hand it over to Him? Because one of the things that is making pastors not to be able to pastor without you is one of the things that is really you know, making life difficult for pastors is because they don't know how to minister or do God's work without making that body their own body. They don't know how to minister uh, without making that yoke their yoke. So the idea is that you can actually serve God, uh, do ministry, uh, no matter how many challenges you have, no matter how many persecutions you have, no matter how difficult the ministry has become to you, it doesn't have to you know, be your yoke. It doesn't have to be your burden. It doesn't have to weigh you down. So the way to do it is to practice what I call solitude. Find time, at least maybe once a month or maybe once in three months to at least go away just for like seven days or five days, maybe three days if it's every month. And just to be alone with God where you'll be able to rest, first of all, physically, and you'll be able to just, you know, shut down everything around you. You'll be able to shut down all the frivolities and the vanities around you. You'll be able to hand over back to God all the importance of the church and the challenges of the church that you are facing on a daily basis. And you'll be able to talk to God one on one, heart to heart, and be able to renew your personal relationship with Him. And then tell Him to handle all the things that you have, all the challenges that you are facing in ministry. So that is a time of renewal. It's also a time of getting the body back to God and, uh, and making that, making sure that you are wearing yoke to with him, but not yoke to the church and not yoke to the bones. So you've got to de-yoke yourself in those times of uh, solitude. You de-yoke yourself from the problems of the church and ministry. You also unyoke yourself from the challenges of the church and of the burden of you know trying to build the church by your power and things like that. And why you hand over and submit everything back to God, to, you know, and make Him the sole owner of those burdens and those yoke. So that's another way for you to pastor without tears. I've been doing that for the past 
20 years, uh, 20, more than 20 years, 22 years, I've been just practicing solitude, going away to be with God for between 3 to 10 days, maybe 14 days, so more sometimes. So another thing you need to do to be a pastor without tears, you need to realize that we as pastors were not called to build churches. We are not the ones building churches. A lot of pastors actually think that they are the ones building church. So everybody says, I want to build a church. I'm building my church. I, I'm trying to build a church. I, I've tried to build a church. I'm doing this to build a church. You know, but, but really, if you talk about the church, what Jesus said about it in Matthew chapter 16 is that I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gate of hell will not prevail against it. So you've got to allow God to build the church. If you try to build the church, or you use your human wisdom, because building the church has to be something beyond man, something supernatural. To build the church, you've got to let God do it. What you need to do as a pastor is to make sure that you fall in love with God, that you have close personal relationship with Him, and that um, it's your priority, it's your love, it's your focus that you bound yourself to Him and with Him, but then submit, relinquish the position of trying to build the church to him. So let him build the church. If he, if you are going to build the church, he will just be giving you the ideas, he will be giving you the wisdom, he will be giving you the insight. If your dependence will be and your focus will be just in bonding with him, bonding with him, hearing from him, the only thing that you will need to be doing is just to hear his directions and his wisdom and follow. And once you hear, when you can go to solitude, and he will be giving you directions on what to do. Well, you just need to be coming out and carrying out those instructions and carrying out those wisdom that God is going to be giving you, giving you. Your basic role as a pastor really is just to carry out, listen and obey. Listen and carry out the instructions that the Lord is going to give out to you. So it says, I will be my church. It didn't say you pastor will be the church. It said, I will be my church. The problem why we cannot pastor without you is because we are trying to build what God was supposed to be. And also in Psalms 127, verse 1 and 2, he said the laborers are walking in vain if the Lord is not building the house. And then the washers, the, the guards are, you know, washing in vain as well you know, over the city if the Lord is not washing over the city. So you want God to do what he needs to do and you do what you need to do. The Bible says in Zechariah 4, He also was on the mountain with the father. Why? He needed to get direction and see what the father was doing. As soon as he saw it, he came back from the mountain, he knew exactly what to make. That's how we do pastor, right? And that's how to be a pastor without tears. Peace. If you found this video useful, please tag all pastors you know in the comment section below. 
DSA's Pastoral Nuggets, Principles and Words of Wisdom for Ministers and Laity. By Dr. Sunday Adelaja, Senior Pastor and Founder of Embassy of God Church. Join us live on Facebook every Sunday, 7 a.m. UK and Nigerian time. Hello, friends. I've got some action plans for you. Number one, if you like what you've just heard or seen, please make sure you tag 10 of your friends. You don't need to do much. Just look for the 10 best friends of yours, those people that are precious to you, those you think must not miss this. Put down their names, tag them, and send this message to them. Number two, I'm such a speaker, leader, that likes to have a feedback from whatsoever I do. So, if you think that you've been blessed or you have some feedbacks, comments, or even ideas, suggestions about what you've heard, you know what? I'm open. I'm open to receive from you, to hear from you. Inbox me through my Facebook or even email me. Let me hear from you. Number three, friends, if you feel that you've been blessed by what you've seen or heard, <laughs> you wait until you get to my other materials. Because when you begin to listen to the other stuff that I have on YouTube, SoundCloud, Telegram, then you come back to me and thank me. Thank you. Bless us.